But uh, my stage name is Spontaneous the Port. Ah, hmm. what about me? Well, let's see. I am from a family that has two siblings, and apparently, I'm the first one. Yeah. And uh, what do I do? Well, for the longest time, I have been professionally, or I'll say degree wise, I'm a statistician. Professionally working, um, I'm an online writer. But I. My other life is being this amazing performing artist and that's what I really love to do, that's my passion. Uh, it was because of a friend who thought I have a spontaneous character, Enigma the Poet. Thank you for baptizing me, a new name that's huge. Thank you. Yeah. Then there's the Spontaneous Treehouse organization. I'm passionate about humanitarian works. And I've been working alongside Mitema the musician, alongside Wen. To, and Griffin Sindine, that's just another amazing poet who has made me realize how you can incorporate charity with poetry. I love adventure, I love walking, I love talking. Yeah, I just love mingling and inspiring people. And humanitarian works, that's the other thing. I remember we used to have this class teacher, Mrs. Otieno. Whoa. And then he, she tells me to go and cram this piece. Maki was in class two and I used to think, my bad, I'm so sorry for all the poets here. But I used to, I used to think you guys live in your own world. Check me out now. <laughs> but anyway, Mrs. Ocheno forced me to do my first piece. And I, I decided not to. I went back home and I said, I'm not going to cram it. So the second day she asks, have you, have you crammed this? And I'm thinking, do I really have to? I'm not going to do it. And then she beats me. And since I was a stubborn person, I figured, no, that's just the first beating. It will hurt. She'll forget it. So I did not cram it again the second time. And she beats me again. Only this time, the number of cans are just too much. And I'm thinking, I don't want a third beating. So yeah, I ended up doing my first piece eventually. I went back home, talked to my aunt. Like, I don't want to be beaten anymore. And the next day I was with Mrs. Otieno and she asks, have you crammed it? And I'm thinking, yeah, I have. Right now I'm, that, I'm so confident. I'm thinking that's the last of it all. Little did I know. I guess she saw so much in me, huh? My family were the strict people. Fine, in primary they supported it. In high school they figured, yeah, sure. And then come campus, I'm still doing the same thing and now I'm out and I'm supposed to be looking for work. But again, I'm fighting with my professionals at work because I want time to go for poetry events. And my parents are thinking, is it even bringing food to the table? But my mom was really supportive from day one. Talk of my uncles, gosh. They, 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 <laughs> uh, they, they just couldn't get it. And I remember I got slapped once when I was really insisting that I wanted to go for a poetry event. And from that day, to be honest, that's the one time I, with all my stubbornness, I went down on my knees and I told God, God, this is going to pay me. Okay, fine. It could have been wrong when I really just wanted to prove a point to him, because that was the main aim then. <laughs> but again, later I figured through one of the performances in This Is Africa Lounge, it actually paid and I thought, yeah, I could change my focus to not just working on it commercially and they they got on board i don't know there's something with fighting and being consistent with what you do and when it actually starts making sense to them they actually jump on board and they've been there ever since uh, it's funny they actually look help me look for events nowadays yeah it inspires me i want to take you back to my childhood i was I didn't quite know how to express myself a lot. Guys at home were, I found them strict, but that's amazing because that's who I am right now. So since I felt I couldn't say much, I had this diary and I'll note down every single thing that was happening. Okay, to be honest, I'll dwell on the bad things. 
<laughs> yeah, and I would vent on my piece of paper. I used to fight a lot, but through the venting, I was able to overcome it. So that's how I started writing. Uh, it all started out in Eldoret through a mentor who's called Oyatsi. And I first did my first piece at One Night Stand Poetry. Before that, Oyatsi shouted at me the first time. He was like, this is not drama festival. You need to know how to go there and get on stage. And I'm thinking, yo, this is new. But I'm grateful he did that. My goods countered and said, she has a beautiful voice. She has something to offer. And Oyatsi chose to work with me. And he showed me how to go about it on stage and stuff. And I can't fail to appreciate Ordinary Mind as well. So through one night stand, I found myself in Nairobi after graduation. And now I'm thinking this is a whole new world. The culture is totally different. People are doing the shen pieces. There's so many rhymes and similes, like punchlines. And there's a lot of snapping here and there. There's a lot of hype. And I'm thinking, I want to be part of this family, but my poetry is kind of different. So how do we do this? But I call John Komboka and he and she tells me about Fatuma's voice. Gives me Eric Onyango's number. Rick Sport celebrating you all the way. And Rick Sport was humbling and he was like, You want a platform? Feel free, come to Fatuma's voice. And that was my first family. Found myself there. The next thing I know he gives me this number of white tear drops. Yo! Talk of sharing pieces which are dope. I, 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 I can't say much, man. He's just amazing. So, Teardrops gives me my second performance in Slam Africa. Funny how when you meet these yeah. people who make you grow from one step to another. Eh? So, I come to Slam Africa and I find people slamming. And Teardrops asks me, Do you want to slam or do you want to perform? <laughs> and I'm thinking, I've never competed before on this kind of stage. And so I decide to perform. And he says it's okay. <laughs> and he says it's okay, yeah. And uh, eventually, I, through Slam Africa, I meet Gladys Mwende. I clear my performance and she stands and gives a standing ovation. She's this capetit lady and I'm thinking, yo, thank you so much. You know, I really appreciate it. And she talks, the second time I meet her again at Slam, she does the same thing. Like, these are the sort of people to talk to. There's people who inspire you without even knowing who you are. And little did I know that Gladys Mandel would be the next person who would make me who I am today, part of the Anika initiative. We talk later, like three hours, three years later, she calls me up and she says, yo, I have this project and it's about sexual violence and I am really passionate and I don't know if we could do this together. And I'm thinking, yeah, why not? But the one experience that I would say from the stage performance to getting intensive feedback was Nairobi Fashion Week. And again, that's courtesy of Miss Grace Aitoti. And the feedback was just bombarding. Having had to hang out with Jimmy Gate later and discuss poetry, the whole clapping thing, that's a no-no on the poetry scene. You go and snap. <laughs> you have to snap. You, you, don't wanna, you, don't, you don't want people losing out on what you're saying. You know, the most important thing for an artist is to be able to minister and to be able to connect people and bring a positive impact. Hey guys, my name is Spontaneous the Poet and I am a visionary. So yeah.